The book I've chosen is by Robert C. Tyler. It's called Ein ganzes Leben, or in Charlotte Collins' translation, A Whole Life, which you might know because it's been shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize in 2015. The story follows Andreas Egger, who grows up in the Austrian Alps and lives his whole life there. So it's about a man's relationship with the Alps, with nature around him, but also how his home changes with the modern world arriving. It's in the end, it's obviously about his whole life, but ultimately it shows how, despite twists and turns, you can look back at your whole life and think you've led a fulfilled life. So it's a message of hope. Despite not having read masses of German literature, this is my favourite novel. It is called Der Vorleser, translated into English as The Reader. It is written by Bernhard Schlink and set in post-war Germany, and is narrated by a man looking back on his life. It begins with his heated relationship with an older woman, rather intimate, but it soon becomes a philosophical inquiry into the effects of the Holocaust, and it was all about Germany trying to come to terms with its Nazi past. I would certainly recommend it, as it will leave you contemplating your own ethics, so do give it a read. My book isn't a great tomb of classic German literature, it's an energetic road trip slash coming of age story, and that's Chick by the wonderful Wolfgang Handoff, sadly deceased. In English, why we took the car. It's the story of Berlin teen Mike and his Russian classmate Chick, who drive off in a stolen, or sorry, borrowed Lada in search of Wallachia. What? Where? Yeah, exactly. So without giving too much away, they don't find that, but they do find dot 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 question mark. So if you're in the mood for something light but not fluffy that makes you smile and wonder where your personal Wallachia lies, you'll enjoy this one. I'm going to cheat a little bit, um, but they are connected, as you can see. My uh, two books here, and I'm standing in front of my uh, discarded university books. I studied German and French. My name is Rosie Goldsmith, and um, this book, these two books, are probably, of all the German books I studied, the most um, intensely remembered, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, Goethe here, um, Die Leiden, Des Jungen Werthes, this was published... 1787. I loved Goethe, everything about Goethe. Um, I studied Goethe in my first year and then amazingly in my final year at university I uh, specialised in the literature of the GDR and I was bowled over and this went on to influence my career at the BBC and so on. I spent a lot of time in the GDR and in Eastern Europe. And this one here, Ulrich Plensdorf, Die Neuen Leiden des Jungen Werthes, which is Sorkamp Verlag, uh, 1973, was immensely influential on me. I mean, I just felt for him. I learned about the GDR. I, I felt his trauma. And it was also actually very funny, too. Um, and, yeah, that's my choice. Um, do read it. It's an English translation as well, also published by Pushkin Press. Thank you. My favourite German book is a three-volume poetry collection made by two poets called Clemens Lantano and Achim von Arnim in the early 1800s. It uh, is called Des Knaben Wunderhorn in German, which translates to something like The Boy's Magical Horn. That's the name of the first song in the collection. I love it because it's full of all sorts of wonderful materials from all different contexts, but it poses as a folk song collection. However, the editors actually uh, reworked a lot of their materials and wrote some of their own. So it's really intriguing and I love looking at the backgrounds for all the songs. It's Cat Hall from Mrs Peabody Investigates. And my favourite German novel is Jakob Arjuni's Happy Birthday Türke or Happy Birthday Turk. The reason I love this crime novel is because it's groundbreaking. It features a Turkish-German private investigator called Kemal Kayankaya. It was written in 87, it's held up really well, and it's a, a scathing social critique, but also very funny. One of my favourite German novels is Das Kunstseide Mädchen by Emgard Coyne. 
It's about a girl、um, that's 18 living in Berlin and trying to make a living. It's written like a diary and it is very poetic in a way because it's written in 1932 and you can really feel that. I just want to quote. Also, ich fliege und bin so aufgeregt. Bin gerade nach Hause gekommen. Neben mir steht eine Praline-Schachtel. Ich esse daraus, aber die mit Cremefüllung beiße ich nur an, um zu sehen, ob eventuell Nuss drin ist. Sonst mag ich sie nicht. Und quetsche sie dann wieder zusammen, dass sie wie neu aussehen. Und morgen schenke ich sie meiner Mutter und Therese. The English title of the book is The Artificial Silk Girl. Enjoy. Gosh, so many great novels. Let's see. One thing I love to teach is Christopher's Cassandra with students at Davidson College opposite Homer's Iliad. Really, the best novel of all time, of course, is Thomas Mann's Port Books. You just can't miss that. Right now, I'm teaching and reading with students Jagger Marinich's novel, 2013 Resto Dalmatia, an identity novel, a wall novel, and a, an important political novel with just a really brilliant narrative structure. You might know also her essays, her political essays, Made in Germany vs. Deutsch in Deutschland, which is really important right now. Hello. The book I've chosen to review is Die Welt im Rücken by Thomas Müller, which、uh, is his most autobiographical novel to date. And it's a book about his mental illness and his problems、uh, in dealing with various institutions, such as psychiatric wards. Um, and various people that he meets and doctors,、um, which might sound quite heavy, but in fact it has extremely comic elements to it.、Um, but underlying it is a very, it's a very、uh, moving and stirring, detailed account of、uh, what it's like to be different society and how you can、um, fall through the gaps, as it were. It deserves every praise it gets, and I think、uh, it should have won the German Book Prize award. I'd like to recommend Friedrich Dürrenmatt's play *Romulus the Great*, *Romulus der Große*, published in 1958 by the Arche Verlag. When I was a teenager, I saw Thornton Wilder's play *Our Town*, in which the theme is alienation, and this play had a huge impact on me, and it did indeed on Dürrenmatt as well. And alienation and the calamity of life is the theme of many of his plays. Romulus is the only man in the Roman Empire who accepts that it's doomed. That it can't survive, and that therefore he decides to sell off what he can, and then when the Germans arrive, he will surrender to them and meet his fate, death by the sword. But, and this is the key point, when the Germans arrive, their leader Odoaca refuses to accept Romulus' surrender and says, "I must surrender to you to save the world from the Germans and their militarism." And so, in the end, Romulus is defeated. He has to survive. And go into retirement. This is one of my favorite German books. It's called Der Hof im Spiegel by Amina Sevgi Özdemir, an author who was born in Turkey in 1946, but who later moved to Germany and who writes in German. So this is a collection of short stories, and my favorite one is the title story, which has been translated as The Courtyard in the Mirror. It has a Turkish protagonist living in a German city, and it's about her connections and disconnections with her neighbors, and also about coming to terms with loss, particularly the loss of her mother. What I love about Özdemir's writing is how varied it is. She can be very witty and playful, and at the same time extremely warm and tender in her observations. I feel like every time I read this book, I find something new, so I thoroughly recommend it. Hello, my name is Jens, and this is my favorite German book, Siegfried Lenz's *Schweigeminute*. It's a beautiful novella about love, happiness, and sorrow. A story of a secret yet intense love between a young student, Christian, and his teacher Stella that comes to a tragic end with the death of Stella in a boating accident. As with many other of his works, in here the late Siegfried Lenz beautifully explores the theme of the sea, while he unfolds the characters. In a quiet yet distinctive tone that is so beautifully captured by the translation of Anthea Bell.
My favourite German book is Theodor Storm's Der Schimmerreiter und andere Novellen. Storm wrote the most atmospheric 19th century German novellen and Der Schimmerreiter is perhaps his greatest masterpiece. It is available in Dennis Jackson's English translation as The Dyke Master and I recommend it because of its setting on the dark and stormy and eerie West Schleswig-Holstein coast. That makes for perfect winter evening reading. Is my top tip, Kröthenliebe by Juliana Bonovich. It's a historical novel set mainly in Vienna between the 1880s and the 1930s using a kaleidoscopic structure uh, about a rather difficult woman, Alma Mahler, and two of her lovers, the biologist Paul Kamara and the painter Oskar Kokoschka, who had a life-size replica made of Alma after she left him and lived with the doll for several months before decapitating it. So it's a strange novel, as you can guess, but it's beautifully written about fascinating people and place.